my Christian friend, they invited me to a church. It was the first time I ever walked into a church. And the reason I went there, it wasn't because of prayer that I prayed. Because I trusted them because they loved me. Mm. They never judged me. They were wow. American, I'm Iranian. They were believers, Christian. I was Muslim, but they kept loving me. God promises in Joel 2.28 to pour his spirit out on all humanity. Welcome to Global Outpouring, where we contend for that promise outpouring and we equip for that outpouring so that we may engage in that very outpouring. I'm Philip Buss. And I'm Sharon Buss. Welcome to the podcast today. We have with us today two dear friends, Kamran and Suzy Yara'i. Kamran grew up as a devout Shiite Muslim in Iran. And Suzy grew up, well, kind of like a heathen, right here in America. And God got a hold of both of them and put them together. You will enjoy their testimonies and how God has led them and is using them in the most wonderful way in this move of God that's going on in Iran. Welcome to the podcast today. We're so happy that you're with us. You are going to have such a glorious time listening to these two wonderful people as they share their testimonies and how God is using them in this great move that is going on in Iran. It's the fastest growing evangelical church in the whole world, and it's all underground. What an amazing thing. But before we get started, we want to invite you to go to our website, globaloutpouring.net, and you can have a look around at our podcast player there and our events that are coming up and our bookstore. You're just going to have a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to see what we have to offer, and you can leave us some feedback. We would love to hear from you. It would be such a blessing to us to know how the Lord is using this podcast in your life. Well, Kamran and Susie Yara'i, it's so much of a delight for us to have you with us today on this podcast. Uh, our hearts are so much about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Joel prophesied and uh, contending for it, equipping for it, and engaging in it. And we know that you folks are doing a whole lot of engaging and probably lots and lots of equipping as well. And I'm pretty sure you're contending. So um, uh, before we get started with all of the um, what's going on in Iran, because Kamran, you're from Iran and, mm. uh, and you have a ministry there. We want to hear all about that, but we want to hear about how you found Jesus and how he led you. Can you just give us a, I know you probably have a recording somewhere of, of a full story, yes. but ca can you, can you give us like a, uh, a postage stamp version of it so we can hear more things too today? Yes, I can give you guys a sampler. <laughs> yeah, there you go, a sampler. I, I, I love that. Yes, uh, I was 12 years old when the revolution happened in Iran, and I always wanted to be a friend of God and be a good Muslim, and then Khomeini came, and it was cool to be a Muslim, and I grew up in that environment. Wow. When I was about 18, 19 uh, the war happened between Iraq and Iran. I remember And that. again, it was very cool to go and die for your belief and to become oh, a martyr. Oh, my. Oh, what, what year was that? This was 1980-something. 1980, yeah. okay. I forgot, 80, because the, the, the year I remember is the Iranian year. But I was about 18 or 19 years old. One million died in Iran and one million died in Iraq. Oh, wow. my. Two Muslim nation fighting with each other. And it was my biggest dream to go to war and die. But I could wow. never kill anybody. I wanted Those to go and die. Those are all young men. Yeah, there's a Two lot of people. Two million young men, under 30 mostly. And, wow. But in that time, this was like 40, about 40 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. The Islamic regime came. But let me say this, it came to me in the beginning when you were talking. 
40 years ago, if you told anybody that Iran, there is Christianity in Iran, or there are, you know, Jesus is appearing to people, they would laugh at us, you know, because Iran was a very strict religious nation, you know, especially when Khomeini came. But fast forward in 40 years, you know, when Shah came, when Shah was there and Khomeini came, I was 12 years old. We had 100,000 Christians. Now it's really? about five to seven million Christians. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No, nobody could even wish for it. You couldn't, as a <laughs> believer, as a, you know, you could not even wish for such a thing. You, you couldn't, you know, it would not come to your mind that the Islamic nation, just imagine, can, can you and I, we sit here and wish for, in 40 years, Saudi Arabia, there would be millions and millions of spirit-filled Christian, you say, oh, oh. that's, a, that, uh, I don't know if that could happen. But that's oh, what yes. happened in Iran. And I, wow. I grew up under happening. that happening. Wow. Like, wow. I grew up. And only God could make anything happen like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? I was always growing up, wanted to, I had this desire to become a friend of God. You know, yes. in the beginning, when you and I, we, we were just talking now uh, about where I landed, you know, it's in my book that when I uh, came to earth, I, I don't remember having conversation with God, but I'm sure somehow, you know, we had something in our, in our spirit. If God asked me that, son, I'm sending you to earth, where would you like me to send you? I would say maybe, like Susie said, a monastery in France, you know, in a small <laughs> village. But God sent me to Iran. And I was in an age that I was pursuing God and Islamic regime came. Mm -hmm. Was it my fault that I became a strict Muslim? No, because all I wanted to do to get to know God. If someone was born in a Pakistan and in an Islamic regime and a very strict family, you know, normally by the age you're 12, you're going to start searching for God in, in, in those countries. In America, mm -hmm. not necessarily our young one. But in, in Islamic country, you start searching for God and you ask them and they will say, Allah is not their fault. Anyway, you ask. They me don't know any different. They don't know anything different. But I had a journey that when I was, because this is supposed to be sampler. When I was 30 <laughs> years old, I was sick and tired of religion. And that's where I wanted to run away from Iran and come to America, start my life new. That's where the, I went to Cyprus to apply for a visa. That's where the Lord Jesus appeared to me in a hotel room right yeah. there. Just a sampler of what happened. And three years later, I got saved. Wow. It took three years to get him saved, but Jesus did appear to him on the island of Cyprus. He like popped out of the Bible. Yeah. And showed up in his room and told him, I'll get you to America. Yeah, he did not, wow. you know, in that sense... That does not wow. make him a very good evangelist. You know, he, <laughs> he could have said, hey, I am, you know, Jesus, and I want you to follow me. In my case, he did not say anything. I knew he was Jesus because he appeared in my room. You know, I, my eyes is open. I can see him. And he knew he was a prophet because most people, yeah. most Middle Eastern people know that Jesus was a prophet. And, and they have respect for Jesus yeah. as a prophet. Right? Uh, yes, very. I was 30 yeah. years old when the Lord appeared to me. I was 33 years old when I truly got saved. And I said, when he's, he the, son he's the son of God. When he realized he's the son of God, right. I, I want you to tell the prayer that you prayed. Yes, the if prayer. I, yeah. I, I love that prayer. Yeah. I have repeated it to people. It is so oh, powerful. Hi. Please, please yeah. tell us that prayer. You know, when I was so tired of religion, when I came, finally came, Jesus helped me to come to America. Still, I read the Bible. I said, no, Christian, they corrupted the Bible. And I <laughs> That's started, what you were taught. That's what I was taught. Even Jesus appearing to me, I didn't believe that he, is, he could protect his own book. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And I was talking to some lovely Christians, you know, in America, I was 33 years old, and one day I, in my conversation with one of a friend, Christian friend, we were talking about God and love. I started crying. I said, God is not love. I, I sought God since I was 12 years old. Look at me. I'm 33 years old, and you're telling me God is love. He's not because there is no connection between me and him. 
And she told me it's Jesus. Previously, three years prior, I had an experience with Jesus. I said, wait a minute. Can you tell me how to pray to Jesus? She told me the salvation prayer that we have in America. Many got right. saved through that prayer. Sure. But that prayer would not work for me because of my background. Right. I said, the Lord always crafts a prayer. I said, Jesus, I said it in my own language. I do not believe you are the son of God. But if you are, I give you my heart. Yes. You know? Wow. Later yeah. on, I told the Lord, I said, I said that. How, I mean, that's... How did you do that? How did you not get offended? You know, me telling you, you know, I felt the Lord said you cannot offend the truth with another form of truth. I am the truth. And you told me the truth. You said, I don't believe you are the son of God. You are not challenging me. But if you are, I give you, give you my heart. He said, I took it. And then it was I a, took it. <laughs> it was a three part prayer. Shut <laughs> then I said, Jesus, I don't believe your blood has any power to forgive my sin. But if there is any forgiveness through your blood, I accept it. Please wash all my sins away, which you know they are many. Then wow. the last part of the prayer was, Jesus, this was very important. If you can build a relationship between my heart and the heart of the Creator God, which you claim He's your Father, I give you full permission to do anything you want to do with my life with my job, with my future, with my existence. I wanted to say to him, there is nothing I hold back. You have full permission. And that's where my journey truly started. And I start, you know, I started having encounter with Jesus. And that prayer works for people like if you're ministering to Muslims or even any culture, Buddhists. I even said it to this <laughs> little Buddhist girl once that I met in a store. I could tell she was searching and I said, just ask him, you don't have to believe, but say, if you're real, show me. And that prayer is so good because yeah. Yeah. the Lord really honors that. And um, mm -hmm. he rather, he rather us be honest if we're going to get real. Yes. And that wow. we, we, um, we just really think that prayer was from the Lord for, it's just so good for different cultures. And it really, I don't know, nine times out of 10 or maybe 10 out of 10, it, it really has worked. The Lord will come and and appear and talk to them, or they'll have a you know an encounter. Yeah, so wow. I love so that beautiful. prayer. Yeah. So, Cameron, what happened then when you said that? Um, after that, uh, my Christian friend they invited me to a church. It was the first time I ever walked into a church, and the reason I went there it wasn't because of prayer that I prayed, because I trusted them because they loved me. They never judged me. They were wow. American, I'm Iranian. They were believers, Christian. I was Muslim, but they kept loving me. I went to a church the first time. I felt so good. There was so much peace. Oh. I was really shocked with the amount of peace yeah. in this supposedly corrupted religion. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, wow, there is a lot of peace. I was not used to it because I never felt that peace. Right. Second time I got invited, something inside me said, go. I just went because of peace. Third time I got invited, I went there. I was late. And the usher took me to the very first row of church. This is a 5,000 people church in Atlanta. Oh, wow. It was wow. Dr. Cooper in Atlanta. I think it was Mount Perrin Church of God. Humongous church. Mm -hmm. And they took me to the first row. I didn't want to go sit in the first row. I, I, neither. I was shy enough to say, okay. <laughs> and I'm interrupting the meeting. I'm six, seven tall, Iranian, walking late 20 minutes after the service. <laughs> Just imagine sitting in the first row. <laughs> and after a while, uh, when the pastor was preaching, I saw a man standing behind the pastor. He had this wooden rod in his hand, like a Middle Eastern shepherd, you know. <laughs> He's and, well, yeah, Shepherd and Shepherd. he was standing there. I said, who is that? A voice said inside my heart said, it's Jesus. Another voice very clear mocked the first one said, ha, mm -hmm. that's not Jesus. I went with the <laughs> mocking voice, because, uh -huh. you know, it made sense. Not like, and fit with your, it fit with your paradigm. Yes. And after I said that, I saw him, Jesus walking on the stage. It was a 
tallest stage and walked on air and he came down where I was sitting and he literally walked inside my body, my whole body. He just went inside my body. It's like wow. my body was a door. He just entered in. Mm. And I saw a hand and he just did this to my heart, you know, it's like it, it flicked turning, it off. yeah, like a lighting a candle. And my, mm. my, in, my inside my body physically, it wasn't a spiritual because I could feel it. It was filled with fire. And that mm. was my oh. first experience with Holy Spirit where I didn't even know what was Holy Spirit. Wow. It was like getting kiss and hug from God. Like wow. many years of waiting. Finally, when you got so tired, finally, I was ready for it. You know, he was plowing yes. my heart all these years. Yes. Making room yeah. for his son. And then he came. It was amazing. It was just incredible moment. It's so beautiful. Wow. You know, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that when Muslims pray, at least part of their prayers, they address to the creator, right? Yes. I remember I was talking. Yes. They, they talk. Yes. I was talking to Guan Chao, you know? Yeah. And we were at morning start. Do you remember? He, he said, come up here, come up here and sit next to me. I sat, you know, next to him. It was next to her. It was amazing. He said, tell me, you know, kind of the same question. But what she was trying to tell the audience, which I don't think most of the audience understood, she said they don't know his name, but yeah. they are praying to him, but they don't know his name. Yeah. I said, that's so true. I said, yeah. wow. Sister right. Guansha, when I was praying to Allah, I didn't know. I right. didn't know. I didn't yeah. know. If Basically, this... Jesus is listening. He is listening. Mm -hmm. you he's know, bigger. He's I, bigger. He's bigger. I, 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 my heart was good. You know, someone gave me a phone number and I kept leaving a message. Yeah. You know? <laughs> think about, if you really think about God and you want to know his reach and his omnipotence and you want to understand he's the God of the universe. And if you start really getting that, really getting that in your soul and your spirit, it makes so much sense. Of course, he's listening to all these people crying out to all these other, whatever they are. Right. He is the one who made all of it. Yes. And he will come through. He will come yes. through for the cries of humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's it's like, like it stretches the Western mindset because we've been taught so much this one way of Christianity. But you know, the Lord is not like we are. Right. And we are right. not <laughs> saying there is any other way to get to him but Jesus. That's not the thing. But no, what we are saying is listening. there is only one way. But he's like Susie said, he is listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like he was and then listening. And he sends his son. Here, go to Cameron and tell yeah. him I'll get you to America. And, yes. <laughs> or, or, you know, it's like Apostle Paul. He was killing and persecuting and hating with everything. He didn't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And then the Lord appears yeah. and say, why are you persecuting me? He said, what are you talking about? Who are you? He said, I'm the Lord Jesus. You have been persecuting me. You know, you know, it's just like Susie said, our God is eternal. is so bigger. Someone like Sister Gwensha, her heart was so big. She mm -hmm. could, she could understand because the Lord allowed her to see it. Yeah. She had an expansion she could, in her, she had expansion in her mind in her, and yeah. soul that understood things that yeah. these are the people that they are not saying oh i know there is god almighty i'm gonna go against it i'm gonna pick allah they didn't know yeah i right. didn't know right. until the lord came and showed me who he was you know it's yeah. amazing that says a lot about him he just clears up all the confusion too of all of that stuff and that's yeah. what they yeah. feel like when they feel that peace yeah like when cameron kept hanging around christians and he was like I think I almost said, if God too, I was trying to remember, I, I said it somehow yeah. before I had my encounter. Yeah. So what, what was your encounter, Susie? So my us. encounter was I was a drug addict and I was raised in a pretty traumatic family and I was in the music business and I ended up singing with the stars in Nashville, a lot of them like 30 years ago. And then I decided I was going to try to get, I, I had, I was singing with Reba McIntyre and her hairdresser was a spirit filled Christian, her stylist. Wow. And she uh -huh. was praying for everyone on the bus, on the buses, you know, 
and nobody knew she and then I asked her one day what was different about her and I thought it was because she was a makeup artist too and I thought it was make her makeup and I asked her what kind of makeup she was wearing because her (laughs) face was so glowy and she said I don't think it's my makeup and she said I think it's Jesus Jesus. and I was like what are you talking about you know let's let's get drunk you know and she she would sit with me. I could, I drank a lot. And, um, and then she, I had an encounter with her and then it was the Holy spirit setting me up. And then later on I knew I was like, okay, I got to give all this up. I'm going to go to a treatment center. Da, da, da. And then one night I, I thought, okay, I'm going to drink a whole lot. This is my last time. I'm going to drink a ton. I'm going to wow. get help. Right. Or I'm just going to do something. So I drank a, t- a ton of, I think a couple of bottles of vodka or something. Ooh, probably oh two at least. And then um, I heard a knock on the door and nobody was there. And I heard God's voice tell me to quit my job with Reba and get help. And I was like, what in the world? I'm, I'm sure this is just from drinking, but it was really real. So I called Reba <laughs> and I told her she knew I had a problem, but I didn't bring it to the job. She was, and she's a great person. And I was like, I think I'm going to, you know, get help. And but I thought I think I heard God's voice tell me to quit my job. I just blurted it out, and she was like, well, "We maybe we should listen." And I was like, "I don't want to quit my job." I mean, I was making really good money. Plus, I was getting a record deal. Da 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 da. And um, she was like, "We should we should think about it. What if it's his voice?" And I said, "What if it's not?" <laughs> so anyway, wow. Anyway, so I quit right on the phone, right there. And like three weeks later, her plane crashed into the side of a mountain and every single band member died. And I, they were my best friends. Wow. And yeah. that's when I just let it, gave up everything for God. And I immediately <sighs> came to a Morningstar conference. Some friends brought me. Mm. And, and that's how my journey started. And when I came to Morningstar, I had a massive encounter. It was wow. actually her hairdresser took me with Don and Christine Potter. We were... <laughs> <laughs> they brought me and I had, I was crawling. I mean, the, the Holy Spirit, um, I don't know what you call it, touched me so hard or heavy. I was, I had to crawl on my hands and knees for four <laughs> days. I had to crawl. because. And at one point, some guys tried to pick me up because one of the speakers was like, bring her up here. <laughs> they couldn't pick me up. These three guys couldn't wow. pick me up. So he said, it's the weight of glory. I don't know. This was like yeah. 26 years ago. And then I threw up a lot because I was getting delivered. And and that's yeah. how it started. I left everything in Nashville and came to Moravian Falls to be with Rick Joyner and, and Don Potter. Wow. And then I started running the worship department, writing songs. And then we ended up all over the world doing worship schools to teach people how to hear God and write for such a time as this song's. And yes. then, um, and then I met Cameron and we got married in six months after we met <laughs> wow. and then wow. we started in the satellite seven years ago. And I feel like the reason God put me with Rick and a lot of these amazing people was for this purpose now. So I have mm-hmm. all the connections mm-hmm. and I'm studying all the time, the Persian culture, and I've learned some things and I feel yeah. like what's happening the re one of the reasons God is setting his throne in Elam, that's a scripture. Elam mm-hmm. is Iran. Is Iran. Iran. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that he's going to bring now the fire of Jesus through the young Iranians into the Middle East and into Israel. And it's a prophetic wow. inheritance from the kings, Persian kings in the Bible. So I got yeah. all of this download immediately and I started just searching and studying. So I'm going to do a documentary. And meanwhile, it's blowing up. We just, we do music videos, which we can send you a few. They're really beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. we yes. do a lot of shows and um, we only talk about the love of the father and the healing heart of God and, um, and help them with their culture, with their culture things where they go from their culture into the kingdom culture. Their culture is yes. super strong and they don't know how to differentiate. They ask us the best que- They're trusting us now and, they're asking us the best questions, even about how to have a marriage, marriage. how to treat Wonderful. our wives. So we're taking it slow and very honoring. Good. But we, we, this last two years, the expansion has been so amazing that we're just really trying to make a map and do stay mm. on our part. But I feel like that's the reason oh. we met. And I mean, well, we're madly in love. 
but I feel like <laughs> that's a good reason too. <laughs> we do put our marriage first, not the ministry. We do put our marriage first, but I feel like that's why one of the reasons is so that we could bring some, some good transparent reality of Christianity into the, into the heart of Iran and, and into the new Christians. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I find it so interesting that, um, you know, Christianity came to the West so early and, and uh, you know, some of the traditions that, that grew up and then, and then uh, you know, Protestantism rose up to deal with some of the things that were off and, and you know, there was a big church split. There were many church splits right. down through the centuries. And, right. But, but um, Christianity so impacted the culture that we have sort of a, a cultural Christianity that isn't necessarily kingdom. And I, I'm excited to hear you talking about teaching the people kingdom yeah. living rather than Christianity the way that we have learned it. And we think that we think that that's Christianity. I mean, you, you yeah. see that in the Middle East, there's a cultural Christianity that doesn't look the same as the cultural Christianity in Victorian England. Well, if, that doesn't look the same as a Christianity in, yeah. in America. Well, believe in dress. You go to a lot of these Africa, different places and all wearing suits and ties. You know, oh, well, we, we that, taught, that was an export. We, you know, we, <laughs> you know, we taught them to <laughs> do that, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, we, we yeah. went to Cuba one time and um, we, we went into the, you know, the, the little room that's off fr from the, the platform. And and here's this whole this whole rack of ties. So the men would show up and get a tie to put on for the service because you have to wear a tie to church. Yeah, Nobody yeah. Had their own they tie, do that so in Africa. Sure. Some places yeah. in Africa do that. And, and you know, like when, yeah. when, we, when missionaries took Christianity to the islands of the Pacific and it's just hot and they're just wearing minimal clothing because it's just hot. Yeah. And they taught them to all wear three-piece suits. Yeah. And, and you know, instead of sitting on the floor, you got to sit on a pew. Well, that's exporting that's exporting not Christianity. It's, it's exporting a culture that has yeah. grown up with Christianity in it. And we've, we've kind of missed it in, yeah. in missions in some cases. And I'm, I'm delighted to hear that you're teaching kingdom culture. Yeah. yeah. We, we're trying. It's already um, a little bit difficult. There's already some, a lot of teachings, uh, good people just, you know, teaching mm, the ideas that we made. Some yes, of ideas exactly. aren't so good. And so yeah. we're, we're trying not to get overwhelmed right? and just bring our part. But um, it's like the, the church is brand new and it kind of makes me get a little weepy um, because we know what's going on now. We're getting involved deeper and deeper. So we're trying really hard not to judge and trying really hard to just stay in our position mm -hmm. and bring what we have, but it's already breaking our hearts. Um, a few things, one thing I can say is, um, one of the underground, well, we, we do a lot of secured zooms to hundreds of underground leaders now. Wonderful. And, um, some of them are telling us they come in to the church and they leave just as fast. It's already mm. cause they're smart too. You see there, it's like when Cameron came, I mean, I'm just going to be straight when he came into our church here, <laughs> He was a little shocked too because he was feeling some control issues and things. He, they will not fall for that again. Right. You're not going to take a Muslim, an ex-Muslim, into a church and start telling them what to do. There is no way. So some of some of the leaders are telling us they're leaving just as fast as they're coming in. So this is breaking mm. our hearts, but we can't wow. get overwhelmed. We just got to keep doing our part and. They're asking the best questions and we're just trying to spread the word. And we do, we do, be, we're really honest. We do say, no, it's not really a healthy thing for your pastor to tell you who to marry. Absolutely. Uh, no, oh. no. So we do, we do hit some things head on, but mm -hmm. um, we still try to come low and honor as much as we can. Everything. It's hard. It's a hard place. And I, in my opinion, it's like, this t baby church, they're like little birds yeah. and they're, we don't want, we we're just bringing what we have. And we, we've been educating them on their historical inheritance that they don't totally mm -hmm. know. 
Yes. You know what you're going to carry. You have an opportunity also to be healthy. Here's what we know how to be a healthy, how mm -hmm. to have healthy Christianity. Well, nobody really talks like that on the satellites much yet. Yeah. So yeah. we're kind of, you know, we're kind of unique and we're kind of breaking through. Mm -hmm. And we are very small ministry. Uh, we, we need a lot of prayer. We, uh, we have like 60 partners. We need about 60 more. And it's just me and Cameron and one girl that helps us with social media just a little bit. And one girl that helps us with um, editing. So we're, we're praying for a few more people, but we don't even want to have a huge, we don't want to have a huge right. ministry. We want to stay this way, hidden, hidden in Raby mm -hmm. Falls. We're trying to raise money to make a film barn. And so we're just trying to stay on the path mm -hmm. and bring, oh, bring what we can, but it'll yes. break your heart when people yeah. come in and the just need. start, we really need to understand the kingdom. Yes. And and you, you only understand kingdom by knowing the king. Yeah. That's yeah. really that's really what Christianity is yeah. meant to be. It's meant to be, you know, it, it's meant to be built on right. the new covenant. And the new covenant has four points. You you your first point is God says, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. The second one is I'll blot out your iniquities. I'll put them away. And the third one is that I will write my law in your hearts and in your minds. And the fourth one is, and you can know me. Mm. Well, that's the thing that you wanted from the beginning, Cameron. When to you were 12 God. years old, you yeah. wanted to know God. Oh. And that is the thing that he promises us. And I don't ever hear that preached. And I mean, he preaches I, that on the satellite, which is, yeah. Wouldn't you, for the, like, we have shows for specifically Muslims, and then we have shows for the underground church and the university. And, he pre he always says, I think he should do a whole nother series. I think he should just keep doing it over and over because he always says different things. But you always say, would would you want to have a relationship with God? That's going to yes. capture the heart of a Muslim in about a half a second. Okay, and now I want starts to talk. I want to I want to get you to tell a little bit more, Kamran, before yeah. we before we close today. I, I think we just have to do this again yeah. and talk some more about what's going on in Iran. But I want you to give us uh, a little bit, because let, let me back up. When I talk about you, I talk about this man that has, that, that is being mentored by Jesus himself. Mm. And, and he, he doesn't teach Kamran the, the doctrines that we learn growing up as Christians. You know, I'm a cradle Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. But when I heard you talk, I I heard I heard things like you're frying eggs. And <laughs> and and Jesus says to you, do you hear this yeah. in the sizzling of the eggs? Do you hear me telling I telling you I love you? Yeah. Oh. Those are the kind of things <laughs> that that you don't here preached from the pulpit as doctrine. Yeah. It's about learning to hear his love in everything yeah. that's all around us. Yeah, I, I think in and that one statement that was in your book um has the the hearts on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And where the Lord says to you, Cameron, I'm I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm the first and the last. Mm -hmm. If you don't put me first, it won't last. It won't work. It won't it work, work because it's contrary to my nature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've never forgotten that. That's just yeah. powerful. It doesn't. Some, and the thing about him is, like, um, he will tell you these things. And if you don't do it, he waits 10 years for you to come back. And you say, now I understand. Mm -hmm. I want to say, oh, why, why did you wait 10 years for me to go this way? And <laughs> just, that's who he is. He never pushes himself. He's so gentle and so kind. Mm -hmm. And oh. he could tell me, hey, you're going the wrong way. I just told you. But it would be just the word, empty word for me. But he allows me to go 10 years the other way around and put other things first, like prodigal son. When I come back, I'm ready for his love. Mm -hmm. But the other son that was working and working and working, he was not ready for his love. Oh, it, it, God yes. is so amazing. His ways are so, I always say his ways are not better than our ways. We could, I could do things better than Susie or Susie could do things better than me, perhaps. 
But God doesn't do better. He goes higher. He said, my ways are higher. Mm -hmm. higher. And exactly. when he shows his way, you say, oh, oh, <laughs> and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's easier to fly than to walk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> flying is a higher way. Yeah, but people don't way. really understand that because we're grounded. We're grounded. Mm -hmm. We have gravity. Oh, gravity. You know, we have gravity. gravity. Yes, yes. And yeah. what you guys are saying about the kingdom, just imagine nobody could jump up here and start flying, you know, but if if the Lord or someone or, or technology could take the gravity out, everybody could fly. Mm -hmm. The kingdom has no gravity on earth, you know, right. but when you have, yeah. when you bring the kingdom, then the earth cannot pull you down. The gravity is almost gone. That's when mm -hmm. you can fly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Christianity or religion will g even give you more gravity and laws and mm. don'ts and do's. That's where you're right. heavy load walking mm -hmm. around. And For an Iranian and a Muslim too, they're duty oriented. So mm -hmm. you have to be really careful and start talking to them very gently and honoring about their how beautiful their culture is and how we can talk about how that goes under the kingdom of Christ. So how mm -hmm. much, so love for them, learning how to learning love for them. It's, it's going to take some time because love is duty. Oh, so, it, mm. so then, you know, the control thing comes in. They're used to that. They want out, they want out of the regime, but they're so used to control. You're going to get them into a church and you're going to be able to control them really easily. But the young mm -hmm. ones, they some of the young ones aren't having it. They just leave. But some of them, you know, they say, our pastor told us we have to tell them every single thing we do and everything we're thinking. Oh, no. And yeah, we're, like, thinking. we're like, absolutely not. This is not right. No. But anyway, so it's just intense. It's terrible. But their duty is very, their sense of duty is embedded thousands of centuries. So you sure. can't just mm -hmm. go in there with your arrogant Western mentality and say, take mm -mm. off your hijab and just worship God. You got to come in and honor their culture and say, what if the best mm -hmm. thing to do is to, to take it from Cameron's angle. What if you could have a relationship? What if you could hear God? What if you could find out for yourself with your husband, what you're supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if you can find out with yourself and maybe a few trusted friends who to marry? You know what I mean? You have to be so careful. So that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. We're trying to be honoring and also bring, <laughs> bring the breakthrough. It's like, yeah, yes. <laughs> And, and teach them that God really wants to be involved in and their life. And love, love, love them. And yes. love, love. Yeah. What is love? I don't think, I personally don't think hardly any of us really know the lo what the love of God is because mm. we're in mm. such a place now in history of survival. survival, codependency, and now constant chaos. No one knows what's happening. But I think now is the time we're going to start to see almost all of us, all cultures are going to understand, start to understand a little bit of the love of the real love of God, not codependent human love and all of that. But, and I think we are blessed to be in this time and I think we can impart that. And I think we're going to have more effect than we knew. You know, those of us who really, I don't think we're better, but those of us who got that revelation, what a gift that we got yes. that. Yeah. What a gift that you Amen. have it. Obviously you have it. So now we're going to see, I think a lot of fruit, and that, that will spread fast because it's such a simple revelation. Mm -hmm. It should be able to just go in and just mm -hmm. unlock, tweak, you know, like that. Unlock mm -hmm. the yeah. secret of love yes. in Christ. And I, I don't know it all yet because I've, I have a terrible time loving. It's my big thing. God teach me to love because I was raised with no love. I was raised mm -hmm. in bitterness and hatred and he was raised in love. So it's been quite a journey for, um, wow. he's ta taught me so much and, um, just learning that and now being able to impart to the youngest. It's the fastest growing evangelical population in the world. And it's not getting, it's, it's surging up yeah. still. Still surging. And the How more wonderful. they have problems, the more that church grows. They come. Yep. <laughs> wow. It's just going to grow crazy. Come. It's going to grow a lot right now after this, what's just happened. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I I suspect that maybe that's one of the reasons why our nation is going through what it's going through, so mm -hmm. that people will get their eyes I, off of I what they too. what they think, uh, and 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 so God can begin to impact our thinking with yeah. kingdom thinking mm -hmm. and our hearts. Well, yes, yes, it's all about <laughs> our hearts and relationship with Him.
<laughs> so um, if somebody wants to uh, find out more about you, mm -hmm. where's your, what's your website? Tell, tell everybody how they can find you and, and find your books and et cetera. It's very simple. www.ksmovement.com. Cam Cameron Susie. Yeah. Cameron Susie, ksmovement.com. And they can find your books there. Everything is there. Uh, they could go to Amazon through there. But there's yeah. no store on there, no. Oh, there's no store? Okay. So you need so tell us tell us the titles yeah. of your books. Um, it's called Food for the Heart. Yeah. And I think there are some in Amazon. Yeah. Audible. We need, we need to print also and Kindle. And East Meets good. West CD is fabulous. Ooh, that's that's the good. one that we made for Iran. It's and called East, East Meets, Meets West. West. You can find that on Spotify. Um, did we put it good. back on Spotify? Yes. It's on Spotify. But we're out of <laughs> CDs. We're trying to raise the money right now to order more CDs and, and T-shirts. So the website is new, and you can find out a lot about what we're doing. And you can see the videos on there. The music videos are just incredible. Amazing. That story, those stories are crazy. And then... Um, and and people can support you there. Yeah, yes. that's yes. what we made got the a website for page. support, really. Yeah. Yes. That we yes. Will and have and a I, tour. I just I just want to say from Philip and me that that we highly recommend people to come in and support you. Not just not just a one time donation, but you, you need people to get behind yeah. you on yeah. a monthly basis. And this yeah. is a good this is this place is good soil to Very put good to soil. put your yeah. seed they into. Can reach reach people that uh, people, nobody else can reach. Yeah, yeah. we have seven yeah. to 10 million viewers a day on, but probably more, we just don't want to exaggerate, but we have, we're on three different satellites now. So it's gonna, it's gonna, the third one just started and that's the biggest one. So the reach is gonna go vi wow. big, it's gonna go crazy now. And so we're just gearing up for that and we're trying to create some new shows. And so we, we have 60 partners, monthly partners, and we really do need at least 60 more, probably a few more. Um, that, so that's what we're doing. We do have some donors as well. So, but mm -hmm. we're looking for some really big donors right now that we could build a film barn. That we, yes. And we know it's the Lord or we wouldn't be doing it. So um, yes. it is incredible what's happening. And also the Farsi speaking countries are all three. There's three fastest growing churches and they're all, it's Afghanistan, it's, it's uh, Iran, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan. They're all Farsi speaking. Farsi speaking. God is really? really using, going to use the young Iranian church. And nobody knows. Jeremiah, it's a secret. It? Jeremiah, oh. Yeah, the, the, I will set my throne in Elam is the scripture. Jeremiah, what? Jeremiah 49, 38. Elam is Iran, and the, the Lord said, I will set my throne in Elam. Well, some people believe that this it could be the church. The young church is him setting his throne in Elam. And then, of course, oh, their, their prophetic inheritance is to bring salvation to other races. So beautiful. Dar beautiful. Darius was the first humanitarian, which is why he yes. saved the Jews. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh -huh. he saved yeah. other. That wasn't just the Jewish race. I can tell you that on the next one. But he... um. He made yes. a space for all who, who to worship however you want. Wow. That but we know sense. God, the God of all, the, there's one true God. And yes. he specifically sent this Persian kings to, to preserve the Jewish race three times. Yeah, Wonderful. his birth was yeah. uh, prophesied by Isaiah 400 years before right. he was born. Yes. The Lord yeah. always uh -huh. had his hand on Iran. And Iran he always was had his hand on Iran. always friend of Israel until 40 years ago, everything wow. changed. And they're destined wow. to really bless the nation of Israel, which they did many times. Yeah. And they will do it again. They will do and it the again. Lord is going to turn everything around. That's right. They're not going to yes. blow Israel up. They're going to yeah. bring the fire of Jesus there. That's Amen. what they're going to do. Yeah. Our God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's so awesome. Wow. Well, just before we go, Kamran, would you pray for our listeners to begin to have a whole new outlook and and to to begin to ask the Lord to to fill their hearts with love mm -hmm. for the Iranian people and the Muslim people of the world? Yes. Uh, before I even pray for that. I want to just pray and ask the Lord to fill our listeners' heart with love for himself. Amen. Some may say, I have enough love for God. Don't ever say that. Don't not mm. ever no, say so that. Much more. <laughs> it's like someone it comes to you and say, oh, I have enough money. <laughs> Nobody will say that. They say, yeah, sure. <laughs> 
Oh my oh, God. Or I have enough right. oxygen. No, oxygen is always good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of us, Father, our heart, they're suffocating because of the fear. Oh. But Bible said, perfect love casts out all fear. Yes. Meaning perfect love will cast out all suffocation, inner suffocation, Father, which there are many now. All this anxiety that comes to our younger generation is the lack of breath, the breath of God. Mm -hmm. We just prophesy, declare, and decree in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the breath wind of God to come, especially over young one. Like you were saying about your grandchild, is always saying life, life. In that generation, I just really feel like we say, Father, let your breath be here. Father, it's your breath that creates this amazing atmosphere for the love in our heart, Father, to grow. We just ask our heart expansion, our spirit to be expanded, to receive more love for the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And then your heart will really be imparted in our heart, Father, for many people, for Muslim people, for Jewish people, for the black and the white and yellow and the red and all the races, Father. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with our love for you. We say, let there yes. be love. Let there be breath yes. of Holy Spirit, that breath, the Ruha, that comes from above, Father. Let your wind, Father, just go throughout the four corners of this world, Father. Even as we just pray right now, a lot of people are suffocating, Father, with fear. Even the fear of Muslim, Father, that's not from you. Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. to be replaced with the love for different nations, mm -hmm. with the love for Muslim oh. people. We ask, Father, that you break the back of the spirit of fear, Father, if it ever got to us as a believer toward Muslim people. Mm. Break its back, yes, Father. Father. Replace it with love. But that love comes from our love for you. If I do not love you, I cannot love a Muslim. Mm. Thank you, Father. In your beautiful name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Yes. And we want you to come back and we will have another wonderful chat in the presence of the Lord and and you can tell us more about what God is doing in Iran yeah. and the other nations around it that you're yes, reaching. Yes. Glory yeah. to God. Thank, thank you so much. You, thank you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the podcasting platform suggest this podcast to other listeners who are also looking for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Check out our website at globaloutpouring.org to find out more information, read our blogs, connect with us, and donate. You can also browse our web store for life-changing anointed books. Until next time, this is Sharon Buss. And I'm Philip Buss. God bless you with his overwhelming, loving presence.